Mana 3 Media. Okay, look, we're all fascinated by other people's stories. People we know, complete strangers. It makes no difference to us. We're here for it. We love to consume other people's stories. But if they can move us, ah, now that's the stuff. To keep a moving story both alive and celebrated. This is Story Preserve. I'm David. And I'm Justin. We're really excited to kick off this episode with a story about someone that really matters to me. This is actually my Auntie Jo, but her name is Joanne Buchanan. Now, Justin, you first met her when we went and recorded this story because we wanted to capture it. Yeah, we were driving through Oregon, and uh, she was in Medford at the time, and um, we had the opportunity to sit down and chat with her. And, um, like, she's, like, she was, like, so progressive Mm -hmm. for that time period in the 60s of, like, you know, going forward, going for what she wanted. And Yeah, she was a career woman in 1960. 67 in the midst of all this yeah and like with you know you know a, a, a male dominated um industry yeah and just kind of forging her own path like so inspirational very independent interesting articulate person um the whole idea with these stories is to tell stories about the people that matter to you most but basically we just want to celebrate their life and so this is the story of my auntie joe joanne buchanan we hope you enjoy it The thing that I would start out with is not necessarily my childhood. When I was 13, 14, we lived in Galveston, Texas, and there was a show called Hawaii Calls and on the radio for a half hour. And every Saturday night, lights out, radio on, and the sound of the waves from the broadcasting the Banyan Court at the Moana Hotel. And Alfred Akaka was a singer at the time, and he'd come on with this beautiful Hawaiian song. And I'd be sitting there every Saturday night, the waves. And then when I was living in Hawaii, and I happened to be lucky enough to be hired by Sheraton Hotels, and I was the bottom of the sales, but I wanted to learn more, so I asked if I could go to manager's meetings. And so I was at the Moana Hotel in a small room called the press room in a meeting. And the sound of the waves, you could hear them, just like I'd listened to. And I thought, how did a little girl from Arkansas, from nowhere, depression baby, end up sitting in the Moana Hotel with the same wave sound. And that was kind of a defining moment in my life. It kind of brought together a lot of my life. And it was just a wonderful feeling. It was, what am I doing here? Did Alice in Wonderland drop me through that magic hole? But I had two older sisters, 10 and 11 older than me. And I was almost like a doll because they didn't have much and they liked to dress me. And Nelda was the curling hair and whatever. And I had auburn hair and she'd make my hair in these little sausage curls when I was three or four years old. And, um, She was a poet, and she, by the time I started school, I knew all my ABCs, I could count, and I knew Annabelle Lee and some of the Raven and part of the story poem, The High Women, when I started first grade because of her. Maxine was a pushover. She'd swing me anytime I wanted to swing. She would sing with me. She knew the words to all the songs of the day at that time. And she loved to help mom, but they were good sisters. They were great sisters. And my life was really a lot formed by the two of them. Um, I miss both of them to this day. And then, of course, my husband, I mean, I was worried about him every day. Occasionally, he'd get through on a a shortwave radio, and I'd get to talk to him until it had cut off, but not too often. 
they lost a third of that squadron shot down. So, you know, there was three things going on. My sister in um, Louisiana and Maxine, and they couldn't be in two places at once. I'm sorry. Let's talk about your career. Okay. Because I have a daughter, uh, Aubrey, yeah. who I love dearly. And, and she's I, a beautiful young lady. I agree with you. And I have a niece, Lucy. Yeah, Lucy, who's and another one. you have been able to experience really interesting things, different cultures. I have. And so I know some of that was specifically with one career, but I just wanted to give you the opportunity to share whatever with my daughter, with my niece, with future uh, female Wilkinsons. I just think it's so great what you were able to do. Okay. At uh, 31, after being married 15 years, I was suddenly faced with a divorce, and I had no means of support. And we didn't have much money to split, but we kind of did, did whatever. And I went to Hawaii. I had no place else to go, and I couldn't see getting a job in Abilene or Bossier City, Louisiana, and I had to support myself. I had maybe $2,000, and I had to get a car. I had to do whatever. But um, I was hired as a part-time a little person down on the dock for a huge catamaran called the Alilai Kai. And then um, that evolved into full-time, and then they made me their first outside salesperson, and I got to know people in there. And then when a charter would come along, I'd go out, share it and chartered the boat one night, and I was supposed to go as hostess. And the vice president of Sheraton, they were building a sales team, and he said, would you be interested? Do you like this job? Well, what's not to like? I'm sailing off Waikiki and Hawaiian music playing and, you know. But yes, I, I would be interested. And um, that's when I started asking to go to manager meetings. They had the Princess Kailani, the Moana, and the Royal Hawaiian. And I thought I needed to learn. I didn't know anything. I didn't have a business, anything. I had high school and what I'd done in college here and there where we had lived that was for fun. But all of a sudden, it wasn't fun anymore. And um, I was ultimately, uh, they. my office was in the Royal Hawaiian Hotel. I was the first female sales director that Sheraton ever hired. And it was because I was ambitious. I wanted to better myself. And I was surrounded by men. And I had to fight sexual harassment. Oh, man, I'd be wealthy now if they had that then. Uh, salary disparagement. I was twice as smart as some and half as smart as the others, and I got paid half what they did. I knew what they got paid, all of them, the, the sales guys. And we traveled together. I became the Sheraton spokesperson for Hawaii, and I traveled the West Coast mostly, but Denver, Chicago, New York sometimes. But it was because I wasn't content to be left behind. And that's what I say, don't ever be content to be left behind. You want to push, because if you don't push, and if you don't rely on yourself, you have nobody else. You may have all the family in the world and all the friends in the world, but when push comes to shove, it's you are the one that can get what you want. And the guys offered to help me put together the first sales plan for the Sheraton Maui because I'd never done one. I said, no, oh, that's okay. I think I'll do my own. I'll fumble my way through it. And honestly, the vice president of sales, who was French and not my best friend, got up in a sales meeting and said, now here is a sales plan. And it was mine. Wow. And that was amazing to me, you know. I don't know where it came from, don't ask me. You ever thought of working on board ships? And I said, well, doing what? Tour manager and passenger service. We had Indonesian crew and all different kinds of people on board, entertainers coming and going. And I loved it. 
At first it was hell, but after I got it together and figured things out, and I pretty much had to do that on my own. I was out there on a ship. My home office was in Seattle, so good luck on any help from them. And we hit a rock and was dry docked, and and there was some and lost an engine, um, flight slate, people missing them, people calling me all kinds of names. Um, but I just thought, you know what? I like this, and I'm not going to let the bad part get to me, because I'm getting paid to do what a lot of people have to pay to do. So, hey, pull your socks up, suck it up, do the bad part, and enjoy the good. And believe me, I did exactly that. I wanted better. And people should always, in everything in their life, want better. You want better. It's not like you want all the money in the world, or it's not like you want the biggest house in the world. You just want better. You want to you wanna be better. You can choose to be miserable at poor me, or you can say, okay, I have to deal with this. How can I best deal with whatever it is? And then look at your choices. I say to everybody, don't worry about little stuff because little stuff in the long run when you hit bad stuff doesn't mean anything don't let that little stuff clutter your life and i've tried not to let that happen even going back to seattle with my sister and the girls and my husband and the whole thing I still had to maintain, I had a life, I had to be there, present. You need to be present in your life. I still struggle, I think everybody does. But the kind of life I fell into after a divorce, I had to fend for myself, I was in a different world, I had to adjust to all that. I was angry at God. And I just kind of walked away for 10, 12 years at least. And faith, if, if, if you don't have that somewhere in you, I don't know that I could have ever lived the life I have had and get through some of the things I've gotten through. And I say to my family, I love them all. I don't know how I got dropped in the middle of it, but I did, and that's mine. All of you are mine, my legacy. Mm. That's about it, kid. So that's Auntie Jo, uh, Joanne Buchanan. What a beautiful story, and. Um, I love that we got to, to. I love that we got to capture it, um, and uh, just the life lessons that she, she that she shared. Um, I, I love the story of her listening to the radio show, and then fast forwarding to like actually sitting in that hotel with the waves crashing. Uh, like that's perfect. I mean, that's like the like dream come true. Like you have a vision for it. You go after it and then you're there and you're like, how did I get here? Like, yeah. I love hearing that. And then just the idea of like wanting better. And it's just been an honor to be able to uh, receive that and uh, be able to tell it. I'm glad she's my aunt, but honestly, just for our listeners, I mean, she's a stranger, you know, and we're not trying to elevate stories necessarily of people who are profile. It's, it's anyone, these stories we are celebrating anyone's life. So one of our pillars that we've actually come up with for story preserve is that your story has value, right? So here's the two questions that are kind of posed. And we want you guys to hear this. Question number one, is my story worthwhile? Well, if it celebrates something or someone in your life, then the answer is unanimously yes. Probably more than you actually realize. So here's the second question. What if I don't know how to tell this story? Well, that's where we come in. That's why we're doing this. We want to help make this easy for people, right? I don't know how many people feel like, oh, I, you know, there might be something interesting, but I don't know how to tell it. Like, that's what we do. Lean on us. We want to tell the stories for you. Um, And so even with my auntie, when we sat down, 
she remembered thinking like, oh, I don't know. This is a jumbled mess. And then we watched the final video and she's like, well, I guess I have a few th- things to say of value every once in a while. And I'm like, are you are you kidding me? Right. Your life has been such an amazing tool uh, for me to, it's, a, it's like a standard of how I want to live my life. Yeah. And I think that's the beauty of Story Preserve and what we're trying to do is that, you know, how many, how many conversations have you had with people or stories have you heard from people that you're like, God, this is so good. Like I, I, you know, I need more of this. And it's telling the everyday person's story and, and getting the, the wisdom and the life experience and the worldview that they have and, and, um, and being able to communicate that to a, hopefully a, a little bit of our lar- larger audience so that we all can grow and learn. Every story is, is incredibly valuable and, and, and we want to be a little part of, of helping tell those stories. That's the real honor that we even just get to be a little part of it, right? So. Absolutely. All right. Well, we hope you all enjoyed this episode. Thanks for listening. Join us again next time. And don't forget, a story told is a life lived. We hope you enjoyed the show. Check us out on social media. Go to Instagram at story underscore preserve. And you can also go to our website and watch some of our highlights. That's storypreserve.org. And ask yourself, what story do I want to tell with my life? Maybe we can help you with that because we would love to help you articulate your story. And don't forget, click subscribe, tell a friend about us, keep listening, and you're going to love the next one.